What's up everyone? Hopefully this round goes a little better. Forgot to turn on my mic and let me just say my two minute intro was on point. It was so good. <laughs> so we're gonna do this again. Today's video is about, I guess I'm grateful that I didn't like record a whole video and realize that my mic wasn't on. <laughs> so we're talking about self-sabotage and not necessarily I don't know if the way to say this or phrase this is the role of self-sabotage so much as it is just understanding the mechanism of what creates self-sabotage or the perception of self-sabotage when we are on our you know journey, the ascension journey. So first I wanna say, I'm gonna give a little precursor and say that when I use certain terms like advanced soul and old soul, etc. It's not to gas you up in any way. It's not to gas me up in any way. It is just language is used as a means to get on the same page. It can break things down or it can at least, it can save a lot of time. So we don't have to go through this like explanation process every time. Okay. So this is what I deeply hold to be true, at least within this dimension, within this incarnation on planet earth, at least from this moment in time and space. The notion of advanced souls and old souls deeply rings true for me. So let's get on the same page with what I mean about that. So an advanced soul or an old soul is a is um, an extension of a higher self that has had many different individuations throughout time and space. It might not just be on the earth plane. Some of you guys might like this might be your first incarnation or, you know, first several incarnations on the earth plane. However, advanced souls have explored the gamut in terms of physical experience, being cognitive or beings that have cognition and then individuations where that's not necessarily the case. There's not as much of a self-awareness as there might be if you were a human, for example. So these are just individuals and individuations that have had hundreds if not thousands of incarnational experiences, right? There's also this, this notion and this idea of beings who have spent, who, who are called to the planet at this time, who have never taken any type of incarnation before. <laughs> I'm like, how y'all do it? Like that is like, that's the kind of wake up call. It's like, it's like, um, I feel like that would be very akin to like being in the most deep sleep you have <laughs> and then having, forgetting that your alarm's right next to you and it being like that, mer, mer, you know, that kind of alarm, like going from source to to having your first incarnational experience on planet Earth at this time. <laughs> no acclimation. Okay, so that's just to get on the same page of what an advanced soul is. An advanced soul pretty much knows the game, kind of knows the nature of reality in terms of being a spiritual being, having an incarnate experience, kind of understands that we come in with certain lessons, certain patterns that we're going to absorb from the collective in general. You could say that we just pick it up once we take incarnation, depending where we take incarnation from, we pick up those patterns, habit, etc. Or some beings believe that we kind of have an intention before we come in. Doesn't really matter what you what you believe, right? Because those patterns is what we're gonna be discussing within this video that creates this idea or the experience of self-sabotage. So essentially what what self-sabotage is or what we can what we have, or at least the way that I view it, is getting what you want, right? Getting something really good, attaining a really good title or a position or a career or whatever it is, and then you do something to fuck it up, right? That's pretty much what we believe self-sabotage is. We're going to dive into the mechanism, the mechanisms behind that, especially as an advanced soul. So advanced souls, again, have done this so many times. They've had many incarnational experiences before that it's like, when things start to go wrong, even if it's a subconscious thing, older souls don't have to really have a grip on spirituality to kind of get this intuitively, to understand that when something's not going right within the outside or like shit's blowing apart or falling apart, that that is an opportunity to then internalize a lesson that is going to advance you forward. I use this analogy quite a bit. It's like when you see people at an airport, right? Advanced souls are generally those beings that not only are they walking forward, but they're on like that moving sidewalk, right? They're leaning into their lessons. They kind of intuit that their lessons are here to take them to a certain place or have a certain realization or to advance them in a certain direction. And so they're moving in alignment with those lessons. Whereas other people, 
or beings that are newer souls or fresher souls or that just haven't woken up yet to the true nature of reality or that haven't, you know, had an awakening and caught back up to speed with where they need to be for this to be a relevant incarnation or where they need to be in order to activate that past knowledge from their Akashic record or whatever it is, right? Sometimes we have to have a, a certain foundation set in place at first. And so this can also feel like it's applied to you at one point in life where, you know, beings that are just kind of like not on the moving sidewalk and they're just like walking around, they're taking detours, they're stuffing at kiosks, they're lollygagging, they're maybe looking out the window, you know, so that's kind of just how I break down. Like they don't they haven't quite caught on to that or remember yet or awakened yet to what life is here to teach them and that they have a mission and that there are certain things, certain patterns, certain ways of being, certain ways of expressing, certain timelines that they can merge with that would feel so blissed out and so free because it's in alignment with, with more of what they came here to embody and what they came here to create, right? It's executing on that intention for incarnation. So when you take that, the notion of moving really quickly and evolving extremely rapidly, and you pair it with karmic runoff, which is something that we've been talking about a lot on this channel. It's something that my guides have been really, really driving home for me, man, because again, when you really understand this, I mentioned this in another video recently, but when you really understand karma and karmic runoff, like coupling that with higher awareness and just that being, you know, a perception, a very freeing perception because it brings you closer to truth, right? And it, and it helps you disidentify with the smaller self, with the ego self, with the part of you, the parts of you that are illusory, right? The parts of you that are temporal in nature. When you understand this, it really sets you free so much, man. And it, and it actually helps even more accelerate your, your process. So understanding karmic runoff, understanding that there are very significant patterns that are programmed into us uh, very innocently so much of the time. And maybe sometimes some people can say that it's not so innocent, but whatever, you know, all anything, all like superstitions aside, it's just where we're at, right? We have these patterns that are ingrained in us that can be not serving or that are limiting or that are just faulty in nature, right? Over time, we be, be can begin to develop these protection mechanisms that actually inhibit our ability not only to tune in and to see our highest timeline, but also dole down our ability and delude our ability to recognize and understand that if we see it and if we're inspired and it sparks us joy, that that reality is meant for us. We are meant to go down that route. We are meant to experience the bliss, the joy, the levels of freedom that go along with that, right? And so when we attain it or we get glimpses of it or we walk in that direction, we learn visualization practices, etc., cetera, and um, we achieve that reality, right? We achieve that reality kind of by force and kind of still by, um, you know, what I tend to notice with certain visualization techniques, for example, is like, it's like you're, try you're using your cognitive mind to try to override these deep, deep subconscious patterns, these deep ingrained karmic patterns. Again, what does karma mean? It's just energy patterns that have been existing on the planet for an extended amount of time, generationally, it's within you, right? And so it's like so much momentum has gathered for this reality and these distorted ways and misperceptions. So much momentum has gathered in the realms of this being true that it can be challenging. It can be challenging to stop it. Another analogy I use is like think of generational karma. If you've had generation generations of like body dysmorphia and eating disorders in your family, I'm using this example because it's one that I can relate to and it's one that I have that has been an active exploration with my incarnation. It's like expecting, like feeling a train coming, right? That momentum from generation to generation, that train is building momentum and then expecting little you, you know, many of the people that I deal with or that I work with are beings that are, you know, kind of like the first link or the first being to break that link of karma generationally, so to speak, that, you know, the first beings to wake up. It's like expecting to stop in front of a train or to, to stand in front of a train and put your hand out and expecting, <laughs> expecting you to be able to completely stop it without any tension or any experience of unwanted emotion or difficult emotion, right? It's, it's going to be challenging and that's okay, right? Just accepting it. Like we don't have to beat around the bush or 
you know, play around with ourselves thinking and expecting that it's not going to be challenging, right? Uh, but we actually remove that experience of it being challenging when we just see it for what it is. The only reason we think something is a challenge or we fear that something is a challenge is because we've identified with the part of ourself that is limited. We've identified with the limited self that feels like it is any, for whatever reason, feels that it is lesser because of that challenge or it is unworthy because of that challenge or unworthy because those patterns exist within it, right? The less identified you are with that version of yourself, the more that you can see these patterns for what they are. They're just patterns. And you can also understand because you've developed enough Shakti within yourself, you've developed enough energy or, you know, there's so many different ways of saying this. You've developed enough space within yourself that because you can see these patterns, it's actually an extremely good sign because you've then identified with the part of yourself that is beyond it, that is limitless, right? That is loving and blissful by nature. You've identified more with your higher self than with your lower self. So I know I might be taking a while to get to the point, but this is just what I'm getting to talk about. And, you know, your girl is in surrender mode. So this is just the necessary context I feel that really paints this picture. It's like if you use your cognitive willpower to get yourself to a reality and there's certain patterns that are underlying and for the most part, even even sometimes visualization techniques can be rooted in fear. It can also be rooted in unworthiness, right? And so we're not actually getting to the root. We're not actually allowing that energy, that subconscious energy and those patterns that kept us away from that reality in the first place, right? Because a lot of the time, if we just came in with no karma and, and absorbing no sense of limitation, then it would be very rapidly that we would merge with our highest timelines, right? But that's just not that's just not where we're at on the planet right now. That's not part of what makes the relevancy of having an incarnational experience on planet Earth at this time relevant, right? It's all for fun. It's all for play. Again, merging with your higher self, your higher perspective that understands this is just a blip in time. These are just experiences. It doesn't mean shit, right? You are untethering yourself from being so attached to the limited identity, which is fleeting and also which just, you know, it's just experience, right? Just different levels of different ways that God gets to know itself. What's one of the main ways God gets to know itself on the third plane of the third dimensional plane of existence on earth at this time is first by carrying out all the ways that it is not. It's by forgetting itself, right? And coming and going through that ascension process um, by experiencing involution and, and evolution. So when you are a being that you finally attain that reality or you finally attain that partner that you think that you want, that you think is going to make you happier and that might genuinely feel like it's very reflective of what you know yourself to be at your core. And this might even be a, a cognitive thing that you can understand that you are God. You you can conceptualize how that is, but your being in your nervous system is telling a different story. That's what's important. What your nervous system is telling you based on, again, your initial programming, your beginning experiences, your childhood experiences, etc. It doesn't matter necessarily how smart we are. But what matters is what our nervous system is telling us. The state of your nervous system is going to be the state of how you see the planet and how you receive other people, right? And how you and how other people receive you because they can pick up on that as well. What I'm learning about self-sabotage or the, the idea of self-sabotage is just that you attain a reality that, yes, is a glimpse of your... It's a good reflection of your blueprint or your highest timeline, Right? But those karmic patterns haven't necessarily ran themselves out in an authentic way. And so that's also why it's important to understand that these, this path, the path of ascension, is nonlinear. And to expect it to be a consistent escalation is, again, like you can expect things to go good on one hand because everything is here to set you free. So having that awareness is key in order to enjoy everything but again if you have this false perception or there's this false expectation that everything should go your way then it's safe to say that you're probably merging more with the ego self that forgets it is part of a collective and forgets it's here on a mission and it's here to uh, you know absorb in my beliefs absorb kind of the collective pitfalls and misperceptions and karma of humanity to help transmute it because as you transmute it, you make it that much easier for the rest of the planet to transmute it as well. Remember that as an advanced soul, again, your your 
ingesting and digesting and assimilating your experiences and lessons a lot quicker than most people. So it might tend to feel, especially when you're going through something significant within your natal chart, for example, within your astrological chart, for example, or just a significant mark or part that your higher self, a significant time frame, um, like activation period or rite of passage is another way you could say it, that your higher self had intended for a specific period in your life or a period in time, know that that is all going to influence this as well. Like you are just moving so quickly as an advanced to, you know, an, an older soul. You're moving so quickly. You're assimilating very quickly. So it might feel like you're having these experiences more and more where you really good things come to you. And this is me speaking from experiences, having really incredible opportunities to work with teachers that I deeply love and cherish. And then, you know, at least at the time, feeling like I'm validated in how I go about, you know, walking away from an opportunity or walking away from an organization, like feeling like I'm reaching peaks that are very reflective of my internal state and in, in the goddess and the powerful beacon that I know myself to be and then feel like I'm fucking it up, right? But again, understanding, having grace that those karmic patterns need to run themselves out, that it's also part of the work. Taking accountability for whatever that was, but also understanding that like when you are making a decision, when you're engaging with your reality, right? You are seeing through a certain lens of perception and if you, as an advanced soul, you are ex consistently expanding your lens of perception, right? Hopefully that's the, the goal, if you could say that there is one. And so you understand you're veiled in that moment anyways. There's certain karmic patterns that have taken over when you're feeling triggered or when you're feeling less than, it's like that karmic cleansing is coming up, right? So you're seeing through a certain veil at the, in that moment. And so when you have you know, gone just two weeks or two months or even two years rapidly expanding and, and assimilating and growing, it's like your perception is not only more expanded now, but you're looking back on a past version that has a less expanded understanding of the nature of reality, right? So it's like, not only is the, like the cringe level is going to be triple, like the cringe level is going to be a thousand times more than... <laughs> than what it might be looking back on it or being in a period where you have an activation or something happens and you know you self-sabotage in a way that maybe in the moment you're like yes I feel validated you feel very validated in that reality and then you know a little bit later you're like oh well oh, I kind of see how maybe that was the best way to go about something or I kind of handled that a bit better it's like that is a mark of growth if you are not looking back on past versions of self even like a year ago and kind of cringing a little bit at like how you conducted yourself or at least that, you know, <laughs> maybe not cringing in a way where you are attaching your identity to, you know, everything that is temporal and fleeting by nature. But if you're not looking back and being like, well, not going to revisit <laughs> that version again, then it's safe to say that you haven't really grown, right? So looking back and seeing where you've sabotaged, seeing where you've self-sabotaged or whatever is actually an extremely good sign because it means that you are expanding. Also remember as an advanced soul, you're probably going to have those experiences a lot more where you look back and it might be big. Some of them might be small, but where you look back and you're like, Ooh, 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 it's like consistently like cringy. But what is beautiful about that too, it's all here to set you free, right? Then you give your per yourself permission even more to disidentify with that temporal nature even more with that small limited self even more. Um, so yeah, I think that, let me think, is there anything else I wanted to bring up about it? Oh yeah, and understanding too that um, we might not always understand or it, it's important to also remember that we don't have the full scope. We don't see the full scope from this, from this perspective. So um, obviously sometimes when it seems like we've self-sabotaged or it seems like something went to shit or whatever it is, it's important to remember that that could have also been part of a soul contract or part of a, you know, um, part of a lesson that was unavoidable or part of your blueprint that was necessary. So 
sometimes I've had activations and I've done things, for example, like me leaving, you know, my fitness career. I was a fitness instructor for three years in person. And then for the last year I taught online and I was one of the like main faces of this organization was in emails, photo shoots. Uh, there's still people that say they see my, like my friend sent me a, a picture from in San Diego of like this big ass billboard of me. Uh, so I know that my image is still showing up, right? I was very much so part of this organization and the way I left was a little bit messy, but I went through an intense activation that allowed so much profound healing that in that, that, that scope of like six months, I was so, so empowered and I would never take any of that back. It really did show me that I do have a motherfucking backbone after all, which going most of your life feeling like you don't have one, you know, that was part of my healing experience. That was part of my journey. However, when I look back on those experiences and how I left and like, oh, maybe I would have done it a little bit more cleanly, <laughs> you know, next time. But it was an experience that happened and where I am now and the levels of perception that I view it at now, I can have a lot more compassion for myself because I understand, you know, I just understand my journey. I understand my soul's blueprint for, the, you know, to a really good degree. I understand what I'm here to clear. I understand my hangups. I understand what I am here to bring to the planet. I understand how it's going to look. I understand different glimpses I've been getting over the period of, of time. And so I know that that experience was necessary because then it's setting me up for when I am again working with 50, 60, whatever, a thousand people and, you know, having in-person events, etc. It was a necessary part of my transformation. But at the time and even now, Sometimes I can perceive it as being self-sabotage when it was perfect. It was exactly what needed to happen for my journey. Yeah, I feel like that kind of sums it up. This is a bit of a longer video, but I know some of you like, <laughs> some of you get some from these. So hmm, let me just see if there's, I feel like there's something else that spirit wants me to bring through. So uh, yeah, so it is all divine. Ultimately, it is all divine. Because it's like you're acclimating yourself to that reality. The reason why we have those explosive moments or the reason why self-sabotage can seem to happen, it's like it's like when, you, um, when you're when you trying to put just your best foot forward. It's like you're trying to be phony. This is probably what Ram Dass meant, you know, to a different degree about being phony holy. It's like when you conduct yourself, when you are like, this is my reality and, and this is how I conduct myself because this is what a powerful yada yada kind of person working with all these incredible teachers, this is how they carry themselves. But that's cognitive, right? It's not like your nervous system hasn't actually kicked out those habits that make you and that need you and require you to kind of like affirm yourself into that reality, right? Because when those karmic patterns are gone, when you've cleared the pipes, when you've allowed that runoff to just be there and you sit with it and you don't perpetuate it by attaching stories and you don't perpetuate it by remembering that one thing and remember and like seeking out evidence to confirm it or deny it, right? When you're just letting it be, it's like your pipes are cleared. So the, the pipe dream is there and you are effortlessly merging. You're effortlessly attracting it, right? It's part of your soul's blueprint. So there's nothing there getting in the way of it. Right. But when that karmic runoff is there from taking incarnation, from being a service based being, you know, you guys have most likely taken that vow, the Bodhisattva vow, even if you, you wouldn't call it that you are here to be a being of service. Right. Inevitably, you're going to absorb a lot of those limiting functions, that, that limiting way of existing and being and thinking. And so these sabotaging moments where you get glimpses of your, you know, the highest counterpart, dynamic, romantic or you get glimpses of what it means to, you know, be a being that holds the codes and that can embody that level of confidence and conviction or whatever, where you are working with hundreds of thousands of people, whatever it is, right? You get, you'll get glimpses of that. These, these are just examples that are relevant for me. So what it's what I'm using. So use what feels relevant for you. You get glimpses of your brightest reality of something that feels like a dream come true. And then it feels like it's ripped away. And it seems like it can sometimes feel like it's your fault or you perceive it to be your fault or you did something that the old version of you would have done, that old version you, that you were trying to get away from because you identified with it and you felt unworthy, whatever. And now you have evidence, you've placed your value on something external on what your external reality, reality looks like in that moment. And so now those patterns really get to show themselves because you can't run away from it. 
You cannot run away from your problems. You cannot run away from these patterns. You cannot lie to your nervous system. And when I say nervous system, it's, it's much more than just physicality, right? We, we know this. Anything physical to a microscopic level, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It merges with your light body. It merges with the etheric realms, right? The astral realms. It continues to get more and more subtle. So that is just kind of an example that I use because, you know, we understand that the nervous system has to do with how safe you feel in each moment, how relaxed you are in each moment, right? And so when you go through experiences and when you've learned and when you've learned that reality is not safe or you're not safe to show up as you truly are, which we all do in very, in many, many ways, because if we truly felt safe all the time, we would be in alignment with that power, right? If we truly felt safe and relaxed, we would naturally align with our highest self. But that's not always the case. We feel like we need to protect ourselves. We start to feel tense. We start to feel tight. We start to feel like we have to put on a show in some way, right? And so and that actually blocks your true source of abundance coming through. So it's kind of like you need to let that run itself out. You need to have experiences and have moments and have opportunities and permission slips in your external world to where you get glimpses of that brightest self and then that subconscious, all of that debris and turmoil lifts up to the surface because without that external permission slip, it would still be sitting there, keeping you away from the reality that you say that you want, right? And so it's just about honoring the process, no matter how quickly you're moving in, in certain stages or whatever, no matter if you're on the moving sidewalk, if you're walking, if you're running on that freaking sidewalk, moving sidewalk, you know what I mean? It's like, it's so important to just honor the process and understanding karma and understanding like when we come here, we absorb, we are connected to the collective. So the average levels of humanity where they're at is kind of, you know, can be predominant within your experience. You know, it's like, uh, you know, that cheesy saying that you're only as fast as your slowest man. You begin to have much more compassion for the, all of humanity as well because, you know, then you really do start to see other as self, right? That this is another being just like you going through something very similar, going through a very similar process of, of evolution. And when the more that you understand the, you know, the mechanism of these things, it really brings you closer to your fellow brother and sister. And it really truly does allow you to allow them and yourself to show up brand new in each moment, right? Because you understand that the mechanisms that are running everyone is not always chosen it's not always desired right chosen at least from this level you can't expect to receive grace from yourself or anyone else if you're not also willing to give it so yeah self-sabotage is absolutely normal it's part of the path of linearity or your perception of sabotage whatever it doesn't mean that like obviously it's not something you want to continue to do but again it's like as you purify you begin to develop more shakti or more ability to perceive your reality and your behavior from a broader lens of perception which is another way of also saying too that you are identifying more with your higher self and combining more with the eyes of god seeing more from the eyes of god and less from the human egoic kind of limited self and i don't even mean that in a way to bash it it's you know, the personality and the ego is necessary. It is how we experience a relevant experience, um, a relevant incarnation at this time. So I hope this brought you guys something. If you guys have any more questions or there's something that you, you know, something bubbling in your whatever, in your field, let me know. Because a lot of the time when I get ideas and downloads for videos, I won't always make them right away and then I'll start hearing things come up in conversation like talking about things that I was going to make a video about and it seems like everyone in the collective is kind of exploring that. So if y'all tell me, then I'm much more likely to talk about it, but y'all don't need me to talk about it, right? You already know. This is stuff that you already know. If you drew this video into your experience, it was relevant for you. You already knew it. You already had this information. I'm just your permission slip to validate that, right? All right, friends, I hope I see you soon. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you soon.